Hey everybody, Scout Crafty here again. It's uh, Friday, TGIF. You made it through another week. Boy, they're going fast. I told you, February, short month, even though it's a leap year this year. And a uh, couple things to talk about today. First, I want to start off with a, a funny story that I should have mentioned a while ago. You know, um, a couple weeks ago, I went to a Monger's Market in Connecticut. You saw the video, probably. Um, and uh, we went to that. It was like an antique shop or whatever. And um, there's a, a gentleman in there. And he, he goes by the name of, uh, his name is Barry. But his uh, his uh, Instagram uh, handle, if you would call it, is uh, Old Tape 61. Now, for you old timers like like me, if you're not new, if you don't know what Instagram is, it's like a little, it's a website where people can post uh, photographs and short videos. It's really enjoyable. I, I really do enjoy it. Instagram, and uh, you can t type in anything you want under search. You know, no matter what hobby you're into, you can type in anything, and and people post all kinds of pictures. A lot of fun. Then you could follow people and. Um, a lot of us follow like a tool people. You might see the people you follow on video, uh, like YouTube will often post pictures on Instagram, um, of, of things that their projects they're doing, things like that, that they're not really uh, going to post on YouTube. So I suggest, uh, check it out, Instagram. And, um, so old tape 61, he's a, he's pretty famous on Instagram. He loves all the stuff we love. He, especially old advertising, things like that, you know, uh, tools. Uh, he's a, a, a big uh, collector of tape measures. Uh, you know, I thought I had a, a good collection until I found him. He, he's one of the biggest on the East coast, if not the biggest. And so Barry, the funny thing is I, I go into Monger's Market and I, and I see Barry there and I mentioned it on the video. It was funny because I said, he's the guy with the hat. But when I went, <laughs> when I looked back at the video, all three guys were wearing hats there. I thought it was pretty funny. So uh, Barry, nice guy, super nice guy. And I went up and, uh, and I, I saw him and I recognized him because I've been following him on Instagram for over a year. And I said, uh, I said, uh, old tape 61. He said, Hey, how you doing? You nice guy. Like I said, and, uh, he says, uh, I said, I've been following you for over a year. I like all your video, your stuff you collect. And he has a booth there in, in Monger's market. And he said, uh, he said, what do you, I said, well, I said, I got a, you know, a small a YouTube channel. I said, I kind of, you know, restore and polish up old tools and things like that. And he's like, Oh yeah. He goes, yeah. He goes like, you ever see those guys that, uh, that polish up those old like like Stanley utility knives and I was like oh. <laughs> it made me laugh you know I was like oh, yeah I, I think I might have seen something like that he goes yeah and he goes, those guys are crazy <laughs> so anyway that's us that's us uh Barry old tape 61 check him out on Instagram I think you'll enjoy it uh okay so let's see what we have let's see what we have today um um it's it's a cold damp rainy day and it's so great to be down the shop let's uh let's figure out okay something first up remember we were talking about the hedge cl hedge trimmers we did uh a couple weeks ago i said i'll show you a couple of people were asking me about seeing the collection let's take a look at some of the old hedge trimmers okay I first have. let's start off these are the uh hand hedge trim you know clippers grass clippers and uh you can see how these work they were spring uh, had a spring in here and when you pull the handle and you could cut and believe it or not these work especially if you got to do a little bit of trimming around a tree or something you know weed whackers are just too noisy you know you don't need them this was good old fashioned. <laughs> here, look at this one here. This is a, this is better quality. You could see it's a heavier steel. Uh, it's not like a, a sheet metal. This is a forged piece. Very smooth. Uh, this was probably used, God knows how many years this was used. And now, uh, interestingly enough, you see this piece here. You know, you, you put the blade, once you push it over to that side, you can listen. Now, a lot of people would think that, you know, and I did originally when I guess when I got these years ago, would think these were like, a, and you could use them for a grass or whatever, but these are actually sheep shearers for shearing sheep. And, and let me tell you, if you are looking for a job shearing sheep, you can make a lot of money, you know, because a lot of like my sister, she has some sheep upstate and, uh, and she has to get them sheared once a year and it's expensive and you make a lot of money if you know how to shear. Next sheep. up, these are actually my users. I actually use these and, uh, 
these here are some old ones you could see and what's these have an adjustable you don't see usually a wing nut on here but this you can adjust if it's depending on what you're cutting you know sometimes if you're cutting something that's very thin you might want a tighter shear but uh, and then you could loosen it up for regular hedges and you can hear that sound you know with the clanking it makes and you know i linseed oil the handles every so often um these i picked up like i guess at a garage sale or something i don't know fiskers and uh, you could see here these are fairly new and they're fiskers and um i tell you the truth i haven't used them yet i wipe them down always with oil and things like that this came rusted like it is but i didn't but one thing i liked about this is you see here there's a little rubber bushing here that when you close it you see what happens it, it it absorbs the shock so listen takes a lot of shock off your hands when you use it so that's a nice little design there okay next up we have it's bad enough i got one of these right i gotta have three or more all right now uh you look at this here and you say what the heck now you know how a regular electric uh hedge trim works well this you would take this handle and pull it this way. And when you pulled it this way, look what happens. That little blade comes across and would cut the hedges. See, so you would you would hold this up to the hedge and then pull it across. And I guess back and forth, because it's a double-edged blade on both sides, and you would cut it like this, you know? So it would look something, you know, like <laughs> when you're cutting hedges. <laughs> I'll tell you the truth. I think I tried them once. It did, I don't know. Maybe you got to have them really sharpened up, tuned up right. Apparently, they sold a bunch of these, but they're antiques. And uh, I prefer the, the clipping type, the ones with, you, you know, the old-fashioned ones. But this is interesting, huh? I mean, how that blade will go across the, the blades like this. Now, again, you hold this steady and you do this. You would go and up and down the hedges. What do you think of okay, that? Okay, this is a little bit embarrassing because I didn't even know I had these. This is one of those things that you buy at the tractor show and I throw it into the area, figuring I'll get to it. I didn't even know I had these. Look at this. These are, uh, okay. These are all metal, uh, including the handle here, you know, and it, it, they're quite heavy when you feel them. It says drop forged and uh, dropped forged by James Forge. Is that what it says? And uh, tempered chrome molly steel. So these are some heavy duty shears. I, I never even seen these. This would be a nice restoration project. Uh, over here is a pair of Wiss. You can see here Wiss from Newark, New Jersey. This was after uh, they bought out the other brand that I bought. And, and you can see these are the same type, but a smaller. You know, I noticed a lot of Wiss had the smaller uh, blades to it. They didn't have quite so long, but you can see these are not even lined up properly So they need some alignment work. They're not even touching over here So they wouldn't cut nothing the way it is now. It ha that's gonna need some work. This is pretty interesting because I bought these These were like a salesman sample. Look how small these are. You know these it's, it looks like a, a hedge trim <laughs> You wouldn't you know, but I think these were like a salesman sample. or maybe you could use them for small hedge work or bush work or something i bought these i thought they were okay really cool. last up uh we have these and uh i think i paid a lot of money for these you know like 25 dollars or something now i always wipe down every time i use a tool or something i wipe it down with a rag and wd-40 after i use it to wipe off all the uh the sap from the trees and things like that so i do maintain my tools pretty well but i don't polish out the ones i use all the time uh these i never used actually i just got the uh these the way they are but look <laughs> these are pretty cool right look at this ready when you open and close it watch it's like uh <laughs> and listen to it can you hear it oh, that's just mesmerizing isn't it there's uh three cutters here and i know these will work because you could see they they just look like they would work and but I guess everybody they were coming up with different gimmicks to try and get the hedge trimmer people that you know that were say hey that would cut three times as fast but really so would as you it? can see I find a lot of things interesting and I have a pretty eclectic uh, uh, accumulation of, of junk but um one thing I found when I was cleaning and looking for those hedge trimmers is I, I found a, a Bridgeport tire tool I didn't even know I had I don't even know when I got it but we're gonna do it today it's a great project for a Friday and let's go check it okay, out. Okay, funny thing is, remember the other day when we were, uh, we did, we talked about the bulldog with the red collar and everybody was on the same page? 
Well, with these little number 82s, uh, everybody was all over the place, you know, between bluing them and making them red and green and uh, and regular blue color. And etch I don't know. Uh, we're going to have to work, think about these and get back to it because they, everybody was just all over the place on those. It's, it's funny. Okay, so this is the project we're going to be working on today. And uh, I did one of these before, but this is a HD Smith company. You see here? And it's made in, uh, it says, uh, Plantsville, Connecticut. Okay. Now, uh, perfect handle patented. But uh, I did one of these from uh, the Bridgeport manufacturer. I think it was a matchless, it was called. But you can see here, it's a tire spoon or tire iron. And uh, years ago, when you had to take tires off a car, you had to... Uh, you know, I'm talking a long time ago. You had to uh, use tire spoons to get to get the tire off of the rim. And let's look at the condition of this. You can see here we have uh, extensive deep pitting here. I hate pitting. You know that. But uh, pitting, we have a little damage to the tip here. You know, gouges. Uh, we have a little bit of rust. Not too much rust. Obviously, here, a little bit here. The handle is a bit proud. I hate these wood. I hate wood and steel because, again, wood expands and contracts at a different rate of steel. And you always look at it. You get it. it and then you'll, you'll grind this down and then it'll shrink back down. It's just always a pain. This is much better on this side. Uh, the back of the handle here. This is uh, flattened down. I guess this is the way it came from the factory like that. Um... Rivets look good. The wood scales look nice, except for the fact that it's a little proud on this one. And other than that, so you can see what it looks like, what we're dealing with here. Again, these these pitting, you know, it's it's deeper than it looks, but uh, oh, well, I'm not going to mess with this with the belt. I'm going to go right to the uh, the angle grinder to get some of this out, and then we'll go and flatten it out. So, but otherwise, it's an, it's a nice tool and it's good shape. These are lovely. So let's get to it. Now you know my favorite part. Remember what this pry bar looked like before we started. And we are calling this project done. Take a look at that, huh? I'll tell you, tools, they were made beautifully back then, weren't they? Let's take a look at what we did. Uh, handled gun stock and uh, then one coat of shellac. They buffed it out, another coat of shellac, and then uh, two coats of uh, furniture wax buffed out. So... Look at those handles. Aren't they beautiful? No more proud anymore. Everything is perfect. You know, this is the way they wanted them from the factory. I mean, when you hold this in your hand, that's beautiful. Um, got it down to a semi-mirror finish. Everything, all the, the, remember the pits and everything? They're all gone. Except for maybe one, two. <laughs> Can't take it down too far. Uh, just a beautiful tool, isn't it? And my favorite part, always the back. I always take pride in the back here. Look at that. That is just, uh, isn't that beautiful? I love this. I love these pry tools, these tire irons. I think they are just a, a fantastic tool. Always, always. Ever since I saw Joe Shop do one, uh, I said, oh, I just love these tools. And I think you would, if you ever come across these, they're, they're you know, I, I, we don't use them too much today, but it's just a beautiful tool to add to your collection. Anyway, thanks so much for tuning in. I hope you have a nice weekend. Take care now. Bye-bye.